Hello, I'm Mrs Martin. Last lesson with Mrs Waldron, you were looking at making groups that were unequal equal by moving the objects to make the groups have the same number in each group. Today, we're going to carry on looking at that. So let's stop and have a little look at the activity Mrs Waldron set you last lesson. Mrs Waldron showed you this house with people in it and the people have been grouped, but the groups are unequal at the moment, aren't they? We can see that they are unequal because there are a different number of people in each of the groups. Mrs Waldron asked you, could you move the people to make the groups equal? How did you get on? Shall we have a little look and see if we can move the people to make the groups equal? Remember, for the groups to be equal, we want there to be the same number of people in each of the groups. So let's move those people. Are the groups equal now? They are, aren't they? The groups are equal now because there are the same number of people in each group. Does yours look like mine? Amazing, well done. You are so good at spotting equal and unequal groups and moving objects to make the unequal groups equal now. Well done. So today we're going to move on a little bit and we're just going to look at our equal groups and we're going to start looking at how many equal groups we have and how many objects are in each group. Here are some bears. The bears have been grouped. How many equal groups are there? Will you count with me? One group, two groups, three groups, four groups. So there are four equal groups of bears. How did we know that they are in equal groups? That's right, fantastic. There's the same number of bears in each group, aren't there? Do we need to count them all? We don't, do we? We can see just by looking that there's the same number of bears in each group. Fantastic. How many bears are in each group? Let's look at this first one. There are two bears in each group. Do I need to count the rest of the groups? I don't do I because I can see that there's two here, there's two in each of the groups because we know that the groups are equal so there's the same number of bears in each group. There are two bears in each group. Can you say that with me? There are two bears in each group. Fantastic. Now I'm going to count my groups and the objects in them. One group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two. Can we, should we do that again and you join in with me? One group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two. There are four groups of two. Can you say that sentence with me? There are four groups of two. Fantastic. Here are some cakes. The cakes have been grouped. These cakes have had circles drawn around them. They haven't been put onto plates. And that's okay because remember, we don't always need to move objects to group them. We can draw around them. We did this with our potato stamper pictures and we did this when we drew around sweets in earlier lessons. How many equal groups are there? Press pause on the video and count how many equal groups you can see. How many equal groups did you see? That's right, there are five equal groups of cakes. Fantastic. How many cakes are there in each group? Press pause on the video, count how many cakes are in each group. There are three cakes in each group. Super. And remember, we didn't need to count each group, did we? Because we can see that they are the same number of cakes in each group. Brilliant. Let's count our groups together now. One group of three. Are you joining in with me? Lovely. One group of three. Two groups of three. Three groups of three. Four groups of three. Five groups of three. There are five groups of three. Can you say that with me? There are five groups of three. Fantastic. Here are some more cakes. The cakes have been grouped. Can you have a go now at filling in my sentences and putting the correct numbers in the sentences? I've left them blank. Press pause on the video and have a go. How many equal groups are there? Fantastic. There are three equal groups of cakes. We can see that. And how many cakes are in each group? There are four cakes in each group. Amazing. Can you count the groups with me now? One group of four, two groups of four, three groups of four. Fantastic counting. So there are three groups of four. Brilliant. 
Now I'd like you to press pause on the video and either go and get 12 of the same objects or draw 12 of the same objects. We learnt last lesson that the size and the colour doesn't matter so long as the object is the same. So you could get 12 coloured pencils, 12 pieces of pasta or 12 bricks. If you're getting 12 objects, you will also need three plates. Have you got your objects now? Or have you drawn your objects? Fantastic. I would like you to see if you can arrange your 12 objects into three groups of four. You'll either move them onto the plates to group them or you will draw around them. And I'd like you to try and put them into three groups of four. Off you go. Have you moved your 12 objects into three groups of four? Shall we look at this together? Can you see my 12 cubes on the screen? And underneath I've got my three plates because I want to make three groups of four. I'm going to move my cubes now. How many cubes need to be in each group? Hmm. Well, if I want three groups of four, that's right, I need four cubes in each group. Let's move the cubes. There's one group of four. Two groups of four. Three groups of four. Fantastic. Does yours look like mine? Let's check it together because remember we wanted to have three groups of four. So how many equal groups are there? That's right, there are three equal groups of cubes. And how many cubes are in each group? That's right, fantastic. There are four cubes in each group. And if we count together our groups, one group of four, two groups of four, three groups of four, there are three groups of four. Fantastic, well done. Now this time I would like you to have a go at arranging your 12 objects into six groups of two. So you'll either need to go and get three more plates so that you have six plates, or you will need to draw a new set of 12 objects ready to group them. So press pause in the video and go and get either your plates or draw some more objects. Once you've got your objects, press pause on the video and have a go at arranging your 12 objects into six groups of two. Off you go. How did you get on at arranging your 12 objects into six groups of two? Shall we look at them together? Let's start by looking at mine. Can you see my 12 cubes on the screen? And underneath, I've got my six plates ready to move my cubes into the groups because I wanted to make six groups of two. So I need to have six groups. That's why I've got six plates there. And how many cubes do I want to have in each group? That's right, if I want to make six groups of two, there need to be two cubes in each group. Let's move the cubes. One group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two, five groups of two, six groups of two. So how many equal groups are there? That's right, there are six equal groups of cubes. And how many cubes are in each group? Fantastic, there are two cubes in each group. Let's count our groups together. One group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two, five groups of two, six groups of two. Fantastic counting. So there are six groups of two. Did yours look like mine? Brilliant, well done. For your practice activity today, I would like you to get six objects, six of the same objects. Now remember, they don't need to be identical because they might be a different size or a different colour, but they need to be the same type of object. So you might get six bricks, you might get six pieces of pasta, and you might get six coloured pencils. And I would like you to have a go at looking at how you can arrange them into equal groups. Now there's more than one way that you can do this, but they've got to be equal groups. Once you've arranged them into equal groups, then I'd like you to use the sentences that we've learned today to describe those groups. So there are the sentences. Have a go at arranging your six objects into equal groups and use the sentences to describe them. 
Once you've done that, I'd then like you to try and do it with 12 things. You might decide that you want to use your potato stamper or your cardboard stamper to make pictures like we did a few lessons ago. If you're going to do this, make sure that you make a few sheets with 12 objects on them because there is more than one way to group your 12 objects. Here's one that I did. I made a picture with stars and I stamped my 12 stars onto the piece of paper and then I've put them into equal groups. Then you need to use the sentences to describe the groups. Now remember there'll be more than one way of grouping your 12 objects so you might want to make a few sheets. I hope you have great fun arranging the six objects into equal groups and the 12 objects into equal groups. Don't forget to use our sentences to describe them. Once you've done that, you could always show the adults in your house and see if they can use our sentences to describe them. You've done some amazing mathematics today. Well done. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Bye.